Hey friends, welcome to my travel story of how I went this summer alone for a solo day trip to Bologna, Italy and did some city sightseeing and video filmmaking in only 24 hours. Ok, I should probably explain you why I went to Bologna for only 24 hours. Well, as some of you maybe know, I live in Nuremberg, Germany, and this summer I was supposed to meet with my family in Budva, Montenegro. The hard part of getting to Montenegro was that there were not so many reasonable plane connections from Nuremberg to Montenegro's capital Podgorica. So I googled a lot of flight possibilities how to get to Podgorica the easiest and cheapest, and the solution was to take a low fare Ryanair flight from Nuremberg to Bologna, spend a day there and next morning fly again with Ryanair to Podgorica. Crazy trip, I know. <laughs> so, believe it or not, the Ryanair plane ticket from Nuremberg to Bologna costed me exactly 44 euros and the flight took around 1 hour and 20 minutes. Not so bad, right? The time in the plane passed by very fast since I had with me a book written by Spanish author Rafael Nadal called The Curse of Palmisano, which unfortunately I didn't enjoy so much. And we landed. I wanted to get to the city center from airport as fast as possible because I booked a free guided tour of the famous Bologna University library so I took a fast train called Marconi Express for 9.20 euros and arrived to the Bologna central train station in less than 10 minutes. Then I literally ran with my 11 kilos backpack for 20 minutes without filming anything on the way just to be there on time at 11 o'clock for the free guided tour. The library is set inside Palazzo Poggi in the heart of Bologna University located in the Via Zamboni 33. The library contains of two main rooms and this is the first one the bigger one. The main reading room, also known as Aula Magna, was built in far 17th century and belongs to one of the oldest and the most important libraries in the world, not to mention the most stunning library I ever saw. It contains more than half a million of books of enormous wealth and importance. The woodwork of the bookshelves, the chairs, the tables, the lamps, everything looked magical. For a book lover like me, I could have spent hours in this room. The next library room was a smaller one and this room was used by professors and researchers. I just liked very much the quiet and peaceful atmosphere of the library. The third and the last room was decorated with these beautiful frescoes with the motifs from the Bible. I 
was very happy that I managed to join the tour of the library. I was truly impressed by this exceptional building. Our guide, student of Bologna University, told us many interesting stories and it was really a pleasure to listen to him. After the tour was over, I walked a bit inside the university campus area just to remind myself a bit on my good old student days. And near university, I stumbled upon the street Via delle Belle Arti, from where I heard a laughter coming. I had to check where are the voices coming from, and it turned out to be a student coffee house. I sat down, ordered my first cappuccino in Bologna, relaxed my back from crazy heavy backpack, and just got rest a bit from all the running. Here in university area, cappuccino costed 140 euros. After the coffee break, I knew I just had to go to the hostel to leave my bag because sightseeing and filming with 11 kilos on my back <laughs> wouldn't be so comfortable, I would say. On the way, I passed by this local market where there were so many people and so much things to buy. But I didn't have force to stay here long so I just ran fast through it. I continued walking to the hostel, who was, by the way, almost three kilometers away from the library. Hi everyone! <laughs> My hostel was on the other side of the train station that same main train station where I arrived early in the morning from the airport. After around 40 minutes of walking, in kind of middle of the nowhere, I saw a sign of my hostel, which is called Combo. Oh, how happy and exhausted I was at this point. Hostel had a little garden area, and looked very modern. Then I finally got a key for my room. Would you like to see how the room looks like? <laughs> Small, nice, colorful hostel room for me and three other girls. And I could finally get rid of my backpack. Whew. Yeah, the view was not that special. towards the old town, I passed by this stunning staircase with this amazing sculpture group at the entrance of Montagnola Park. I've always been impressed by Italian sculptures, with all the little details that the artists create with their works. Montagnola Park is the oldest park in Bologna and is open to public since 1664. When I was preparing for my Bologna trip, I found out on the internet that Bologna is famous for its canals 
that helped the town to become one of the main commercial trade centers of the Middle Age. It was not so easy to find the canals, since they are kind of hidden and located on not so expected places. Even with the map, I searched for them probably half an hour, until I finally found them. Mm, so much hope and love in these locks. Starting in the 12th century, a total of 60 km canals were dug to connect Polonia with the rivers nearby. The canals were used to dry water mills, for example, for grinding flour. In the past, canal boats were transporting goods and people to the cities like Ferrera and Venice, and that boat ride took only 40 hours back then. Now, when I say that the canals are hidden, I really mean that. This little window in a wall, called Finestrella, located on Via Piella, gives a magical and really unexpected glimpse of Polonia's canals. Of course, I had to open the window as well, <laughs> and try to imagine how it was in the 18th century, when thousands of boats per year were transporting here tons and tons of goods. After the canals, I started searching for Bologna's famous porticos, who are actually listed in UNESCO's World Heritage Site. Porticos truly make the city of Bologna unique and special. Some of them are wooden, like these porticos of Via Marcella, and are built in far 13th century. The total length of porticos is almost 62 kilometers long, of which 40 kilometers are in the city center. Some of the porticos are very narrow, only around 95 centimeters, and others are wide and look like an open air museum. I liked very much the porticos located near Piazza Verdi, which were very long and picturesque, with all the arches and columns. In Bologna, I truly felt like nowhere else before. I enjoyed a lot filming the porticos from all the possible angles, trying out different compositions, playing with their perfect symmetry and unique beauty. These are the famous Le Due Torri of Bologna, where you can climb up for the great view of the city. Somewhere around 4 p.m., I managed to go to the museum of the Archiginasio. The Archiginasio of Bologna is one of the most important buildings in the city. Before, it was the main building of the University of Bologna, and nowadays it houses two very important rooms, the Archiginasio Municipal Library and the Anatomical Theater. The Anatomical Theater of the Museum of Archiginasio is a hall once used for anatomy lectures of the medical school. This room felt really outstanding, especially if you have imagination like me and immediately think about the students back then learning here all the types of human bones and muscles, dreaming how they will help and save people's lives one day. And the other room, also called Stabat Mater Lecture Hall, is a public library in Bologna and as well the largest library in Emilia-Romagna region of Italy. It has more than 850,000 volumes, from which 15,000 are coming from the 16th century. 
It also has thousands of manuscripts and letters, prints, drawings. I just felt so good here, being surrounded with the books again. Next place I visited on my solo exploring the town of Bologna was its main square called Piazza Maggiore. A place where Basilica is situated, where people gather and where I notice one more masterpiece of Italian sculptures, the Neptune Fontaine. I could have spent hours here, just by looking at all the details, portraits and forms. Of course, here are also the porticos, and it looked like this group here was celebrating something. But I didn't understand what. <laughs> but it looked like they have a lot of fun. And not to forget, shopping street. But not so much for me. I had different plans for this day. This pretty big square with a lot of bars, restaurants and shops is called Santo Stefano. At this point in the afternoon, you can imagine, my friends, how tired I felt. But I just didn't want to go back to hostel and miss out to see the nightlife time in Bologna. So, I decided, before I go for eating, to sit down for one more cappuccino of the day. And after the coffee break, I went to the nearby local Mercato di Messo, cozy and covered food market with a very nice and relaxed atmosphere. The prices here, comparing to the restaurants, were not that high, and there was a big variety of local dishes to try. Of course, you know me. When I saw that one stand is selling fish, that was a choice for me. But, to be honest, <laughs> food really didn't taste so good. I'm really sorry to say that, because the people working here were very nice and kind, but the fish was mm, not so nice. It was warmed in the microwave and it was really not that fresh. When I left the Mercato di Messo, outside on the streets, the nightlife had already started. People were eating all those great Italian dishes like pizza, pasta, lasagna, risotto, fish, ravioli, mm, tiramisu, cannoli, gelato, cakes, <sighs> drinking wine, beer, cocktails. It was such a good atmosphere. But, as I was awake since 5 o'clock in the morning and running through whole Bologna the whole long day, I had to go to my hostel room, get some sleep, rest a bit and prepare for the next morning trip, a trip to Budva, Montenegro. Bologna was an amazing experience and I hope, my friends, you will come to visit this town on your own. Thank you. And see you in the next video. Take care. Buona notte.